so you're saying I can ask this cat any question? The cat is connected to the computer. You just type in the question, it will read his mind. There the answer comes. You're the man! I've been looking for this for weeks. Welcome to a lesson on the counting principle, and the goal of this video is to determine the number of ways multiple independent events can occur. So this is what the fundamental counting principle says. If there's a sequence of independent events that can occur, a sub one, a sub two, all the way out to a sub n ways, then the number of ways all of the events can occur is a sub one times a sub two times all the way out to a sub n. So we can use the counting principle to answer a question as we see here. How many ways can students answer a three question true or false quiz? Before we take a look at the counting principle though, let's go ahead and illustrate all of the possible ways to answer this test using a tree diagram. So for question one, there are two choices. It must be answered true or false for question one. Now for question two, there's also two options, true or false. But since there's also two ways to answer the first question, if the first question is true, the second question could be true or false. And also, if the first question is false, we have the option of true or false for the second question. So we can see after question two, we have four possibilities. True, 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 false, false, true, or false, false. Each of those being unique answers to this quiz. And then lastly, for the third question, there's also two options. So at the end of each branch here, there are two options. So we have true, false here, true, false here, here, and here as well. So each of these branches represents a possible option for answering the questions one, two, and three for this quiz. And you can see there are eight different ways. True, 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 false, true, false, true, true, false, false, and so on, all the way down this tree. Now it's much faster just to use the counting principle. There are three events taking place here, one for each question, and each of these questions can be answered two different ways. So using the counting principle, we'd have two times two times two for the first three questions, which equals eight possible ways this quiz can be answered. Let's take a look at another question. How many passwords using six digits where the first two digits must be letters and the last four digits must be numbers. So there are six independent events here. One, two, three, four, five, six. The first two must be letters and the last four must be numbers. Well, there are 26 letters in the alphabet, so there's 26 ways the first letter can be chosen and the same for the second letter. And then the last four must be numbers. Well, the digits from zero to nine represent 10 choices for each number. So this would be times 10, times 10, times 10, times 10. So this product will represent the total number of passwords that are possible using these conditions. So let's go ahead and figure out what that would be. So if we use our calculator, we would have 26 squared times 10 to the fourth. Which equals 6,760,000 possible passwords. Let's go and take a look at a couple more questions. A restaurant offers a dinner special in which you get to pick one item from four different categories. As we see listed here, how many different meals are possible? First thing we should notice is we have four different categories to select from. So we have one, two, three, four independent events. So the first event would be for the beverage. The second event would be for the appetizer. Third for the meal and fourth for the dessert. Looking at the beverage options, you can see there are four possibilities. So there are four ways that event can occur. For appetizers, there are three. 
for the meal there are one, two, three, four options or four ways to choose the main meal. And for the dessert we have three options. So the product of these will tell us the total number of ways we can select different dinners from this special. Well four times three would be twelve, times four would be forty-eight, times three would equal one hundred forty-four. So there are one hundred forty-four ways to select a dinner under these conditions. Let's go and take a look at one more. A door lock on a classroom requires entry of four digits. All digits must be numbers, but the digits cannot be repeated. How many unique codes are possible? So again, this is very similar, except we do have a special condition here that the digits cannot repeat. So it's a slight variation of the counting principle, since each of these digits are not independent because they cannot be repeated. However, for the first digit, there are no restrictions, so there are ten possibilities, zero through nine. But for the second digit, we cannot repeat the digit used in the first position. So instead of ten possibilities, there would only be nine. And then for the third, we can't repeat either of the first two digits, so that would leave eight possibilities. And then for the fourth, we can't repeat any of the first three, so that would leave seven possible digits. So the product of these would be the total number of unique codes that are possible. So we have ten times nine times eight times seven. So there are 5,040 unique codes for the door lock. Okay, that'll do it for this video. Next, we'll take a look at permutations and combinations. Thank you for watching.